uh, Revelation today. And um, we, we actually went uh, way further than I uh, anticipated in the beginning, but it was just kind of fun and just kept going. And, and, and we're not hitting every, you know, every detail of it because it's the same story seven times. So rather than retell that every, differently with different images, we, we're just kind of hitting the, the key parts of it. And so we're going to look at the end today, uh, which is a big climax, right? It's, it's, it's the end. It's the end of all time. It's, it's the beginning of heaven. And, when, and what does that look like? What does that feel like? I mean, nobody really knows. Nobody's been there um, that can tell us about it. Um, and, and we haven't seen it. We get some glimpses in Scripture. And, and so we'll look a little bit about what Revelation has to say about the end of time, what, what our future is going to look like. But before we go to the end, let's go way back to the beginning that caused all of this problem in in the first place. If you go back to Genesis 1, God had finished up creation. He's looking at this hand, this beautiful work that he had done, this wonderful creation. And in chapter 1, verse 31, he, he says, it says, God saw all he had made, and it was very good indeed. Evening came, and then morning, and the sixth day. Now, even this we can't really fully comprehend. We've never lived without the curse in our life. We've never lived in the utopia that was the Garden of Eden prior to sin. We don't know what that relationship was like that when we just kind of t- walked around and, hey God, how you doing? I mean, it, we, we just have not experienced that. But we get the idea, just pulling from different scriptures, that, that, that everything seemed to work together and live together in, in harmony. We know that death did not exist. So, so everything that we know as reality, it just simply wasn't yet. Uh, there were no unmet needs. I mean, Adam and Eve had everything that they needed in the garden. Everything was provided for them. Uh, it was, there was no sin. There was no death. There was no anxiety over life. It was just, it, things were just provided for them. No heartache and pain that comes with the sin and, and all of that. And then Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And literally everything changed at that moment uh, when when God brings the curse onto mankind. And the curse is all we've ever known. I mean, that's that's all we know. Genesis 3, he he lets Adam and Eve know what has happened as a result of of sin. Uh, He said to the woman in verse 16, I will intensify your labor pains. I've always found this interesting because we don't know. We always assume because of the pictures we had or little flannel graphs we had as kids, like, oh, there was only Adam and Eve at this time. Well, evidently, there were already children born because now the labor pains will be intensified. Uh, So so that's part of of the curse. Adam and Eve happened to be the ones who who started it and then sinned. Uh, Who knows how many children running around? I will intensify your labor pains. You will bear children with painful effort. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Then he talks to the man. Uh, He said to the man, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat plants of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground, since for you were taken from it, for you are dust, and you will return to dust. So whatever labor was happening prior to this evidently wasn't that much of what we think of as labor. There was no sweat of the brow. There was no difficulty, no challenges, no weeds, you know, all this stuff that, that we have in life. They just wasn't there. The, the world literally changed that day from life and peace and paradise to death and decay and hard labor and chaos. That's all we know. I mean, I know nothing beyond that. There's no way we would know beyond. I mean, I have peaceful moments and peaceful periods of my life, but then chaos seems to come. And there's all, I mean, shoot, since, since our childhood, we know at some point we're going to die. I mean, it's kind of like a freaky thing. I mean, what is that like? I don't know. I've never experienced. I mean, you know, it's, it's just this, we live under the curse. We understand what the curse is. Later on, the Apostle Paul 
wrote uh, concerning creation and and the curse. Uh, He said in Romans 8, for the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. Not only that, but we ourselves who have the Spirit as first fruits, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. This, this is uh, God saying man and creation, everything that exists is groaning, looking forward for the reversal of the curse. The curse happened, and we've been under this bondage ever since. And even creation says, can we just go back to how it was? It was so much better before. And even something within our soul says something's just not right. I mean, something's not exact. There's something missing in the world. You heard Dan Custis a few moments ago mention Shane Wood. I listened to him a little bit this week as well, and he has a lot of stuff on Revelation and, and, and um, the, whole, the whole thing. And he says, um, he's a professor at Ozark Christian College at, um, down in Joplin, he says there's four relationships that were broken at the curse, if you look back at Genesis um, that we read, in that, that the, the giving of the curse from God to mankind, there's four relationships that are broken here. The relationship between humanity and self, that's me and me. This, I, I'm not okay with me. You know, I like to put on a show that I am, but, but you know, everybody has self-doubt. Everybody has um, uh, just an uncomfort. I mean, I mean we, we put on a, a good face and we act like we got it all together, but we don't. We know there's something missing in this world. We struggle with low self-image. Um, it's this whole uh, God-shaped hole that, that we've talked about before that, that only God can fill. But even when he fills it, like it's, it's, it only goes so far, I still struggle with sin. I still know that death will come. I mean, it, so we still live in the curse, but we've, we've come part way there. Humanity uh, and self have a relationship problem. The second issue or broken relationship is between humanity and humanity. We try to get along, but we don't like each other, (laughs) you know? We have moments, we irritate each other, we have pride, we have ego, we have selfishness, we grind each other the wrong way, sometimes we hurt each other, sometimes unintentionally, sometimes intentionally, but we push against one another, fighting one another, we cut each other off in traffic, even people we don't know, we're rude to one another, our selfishness and pride causes all kinds of of heartache in life. How many times do you lay awake at night worried about how someone was treating you or you were treating yourself? You know, whatever. I mean, there's this humanity versus humanity thing that we deal with that happened from the curse. Uh, thirdly, the relationship between humanity and, and creation. Our, our very existence uh, puts a drain on creation. <laughs> I mean, like we d- destroy, it seems like everything we touch, uh, we're, we're, we're comp- uh, com- depleting resources, um, we, we pollute everything. Um, now, fortunately, God gave us dominion over the animals. I, I love to eat animals. They evidently don't like to be eaten, right? So they run from us. You go out into the wild, and they're going to run from you. They, you. Hunting is a thing because animals don't want to get shot, right? So there's this, there's this friction between humanity and, and, and creation uh, as, as well. And then fourthly, the relationship between humanity and God. At the curse... When death entered and God pushed Adam and Eve out of the garden, he put angels up with flaming swords so that we couldn't go back in. We are now barred from, from whatever that utopia was. We've never seen it. We've never experienced it. We just we read about it. Other than that, we, we just don't know. We don't have access to where God is other than through prayer. Um, and, and through the blood of Jesus. I, I mean, uh, sin has separated us from God. Sin causes death and hardship. My personal sin has caused my separation from God. And the remedy was the cross. We celebrate the cross. We remember the cross every, every week, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He rose in the grave. He conquered sin. He conquered death. But we're still still in the curse, right? It's not final yet. Death has been conquered. However, I'll probably die someday. 
I'll just live forever. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you know the whole gospel story, right? I mean, we're going to die, be a, but there won't be a second death. So eternal death ha- has been solved, but I'm still going to physically probably die. An ice cream truck, truck might run me over when I'm crossing the road. I didn't look both ways. I, um, I could get a, a disease. I mean, any, a lot of things could happen. I could just finally wither because I'm, you know, 900 years old. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to happen sooner or later. I'm going to die, and, and so were you. We're still part of the curse. Sin is conquered. Sin is, has, has been put to death itself, but I still struggle with sin. Paul says sometimes I do what I don't want to do. Sometimes I don't do what I want to do. I mean, we still struggle. The curse is still very real to us. We haven't seen a complete annihilation of death and sin yet. So creation groans. We groan waiting for that final blow to happen where death is put to death, where sin is no more. So Revelation tells us here's what it's going to look like. Here's how this is going to go down. And and like I've said, it's the same story multiple times in in the book. Um, Revelation 14 talks about a great harvest that will take place, uh, bringing judgment to evildoers. Revelation 19 talks about a a rider on a white horse, a conqueror, been on conquest, and and he's bringing war against the nations, bringing judgment to evildoers. Revelation 21 talks about those who choose sin will die and remain in the curse for eternity. separated uh, from God. But for the believer, uh, for those of us who are followers of of Jesus Christ, the curse is reversed. Uh, Now, I'll be honest, I've never looked at it this way before, Um, so it's been an intriguing study for me, and I'm still honestly processing some of this, like figuring out, uh, it'll it'll probably click in about two years, I go, ah, I don't know, okay, but but, but, but it's been a really neat process for me, looking at this differently uh, and with fresh eyes over the past few years, trying to process what really happens here. What, 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 going back to the curse is is eye-opening, because you got the curse, and life as we know it, and Death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, church age, Jesus returns, and everything flips over. The curse is reversed. It's gone. And now we live post-curse. Uh, that's, that's what heaven looks like. Revelation 21, 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride, adorned for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne, look, God's dwelling is with humanity. He will live with them. They will be his peoples. God himself will be with them, and they will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief Crying and pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. A few weeks ago, uh, we talked about uh, pretty heavily about the, the doctrine of, of rapture and, and how I was taught my whole life and how predominantly is taught out there. And if um, you do an internet search for any sermons in Revelation, mo- 90% of them are going to approach it uh, from this rapture point of, of view. But we talked about how actually, it's only 190 years old, the doctrine, and, and actually it is like reverse of how Jesus said it would go down. Um, and, and I gave you a few weeks to process that and let it, let it, let it soak in a little bit. Just to give you a brief, uh, when Jesus says in Matthew 24 that the end of days will be like the days of Noah, and, and he talks about that a little bit, where, where one is taken and one is left behind, I and mean, they've made movies all about that, right? And we always view the evil people being left behind and the godly being taken, right? Oh, we're going up to heaven, woohoo! Okay, um, complete opposite of how Jesus said it. In the days of Noah, that's not how it went down. In the days of Noah, Noah built an ark, and all of the world was swept away. The evil were swept away, the righteous stayed. Uh, and Jesus is like, well, in the end days, it's going to be like that. Um, the evil will be swept away. The judgments mentioned uh, earlier that I mentioned. 
uh, and the righteous will, will stay here. Uh, evil's removed from the earth in judgment. Uh, the earth is remade. The new heaven and new earth are brought here. The new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. He saw Jerusalem come down to here, and God with his throne comes down here to live with humanity. Wherever the throne of God is, that's where heaven is. Uh, so I can say, oh, no, no, it's going to be up there somewhere floating. It's like, well, it's not if he's down here, it's not. <laughs> it, this is, then this is, this is where it's at. Uh, verse, verse 5, the one seated on the throne said, look, I'm making everything new. He said, right, because these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, it's done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give to the thirsty from the spring of the waters of life. The one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Uh, chapter 22, verse 1, Then he showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the city's main street. The tree of life was on each side of the river, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit every month. The leaves on the tree are for healing the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The curse has been reversed. The curse that was put on mankind is now taken away. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will worship him. That's us. We will see his face. His name will be on their foreheads. Night will, no longer, will be no more. Uh, people will not need the light of lamp or the light of the sun, because the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. The, uh, the word new is used a few times in, in chapter 21 specifically, and the, 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 the English word new has a couple different Greek words that are translated new. One is new as in fresh out of nothing. Uh, I, I bought a new truck this year, and in June it did not exist. Right? Somebody put a bunch of metal together, and they went through a line, and somebody painted it, and they delivered it on a truck, and it came to me. It was a new, a new thing from, from, from scratch. Right? It was beautiful. It's the second time I've done that in my life. And, and, and uh, it was new. new. Another word for new is, is taking something that's existing and, and restoring it, uh, re remaking it. I was basically partially remaking my old truck every month, and it was costing way more than I'm paying now. <laughs> so I thought, this is getting silly. <laughs> I could have a new one. Um, a few years ago, we uh, redid our backyard, and I, I wish I would have taken like total first pictures and total after pictures. These are kind of uh, an idea. We redid our little shed back there, and, and we had this, these, these overgrown bushes that were always like, I'm sure they were nice at the time, but we don't know how to take care of these things, and, and it was all gross and, and yucky, and like, we didn't even go back to the backyard. Like, we'll just send the dog back out there and let him go poo. Then I don't have to worry about, you know, we don't care. You know, uh, just stay out of the backyard. And then we're like, well, we have all this yard. We should do something with it. So we, it's new, right? We cut everything out, put in a new fence, and, and all this stuff. And, and, and there actually is a gate there now. I mean, it was, it was, it was partially done. Um, uh, recited the, the little house there, a little project I did uh, one week. And, and, and it, it was, it was done. It, it, that's a redone thing. It's new. It looks completely different than it did. That's the word that's used in, in Revelation here. Uh, you take something that's existing, completely wipe it out, and then build it up again, and it's refreshed, and it's renewed. That's what happens to the planet Earth in the end times that Revelation is, is talking about. I've spent really my whole life uh, envisioning heaven as this, like this, we always think of it as up, right? Well, you know, up there, you know, when someday I'll be up there, you know. We, we look at it that way because we don't know what to think. Uh, we don't know how to view it. Um, and I could still be wrong, and, and I'd be okay with that. But, but, but I'm looking at freshly at Scripture uh, this past week and the last really couple of years as I've kind of played around with the topic. I, it, 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 it's more than that. It's not some place where we just float around um, randomly for, forever, and every once in a while we drop to our knees on a cloud and say, holy, 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 you know, and, and, and do that whole thing. If we go back and look at these first uh, five verses, verses one through five, 
it actually says that God's throne comes, comes here. He's coming here. And like I said, heaven is where his, his throne, his, his dwelling place is with us. He, he lives with us. Um, a new heaven and a new earth, that's that refurbished thing. The first heaven, the first earth, they're passed away. Someone cut everything down and threw it out like we did. Uh, the sea is no more. So the things that we look at as normal won't be, it'll be different, right? It'll be different. New Jerusalem coming down out of, out of heaven. Uh, God's dwelling is with humanity. He will live with them. So it's like, if I go to live with you, that means you are there and I'm coming to you. God's saying, I'm coming to you. I'm going to come and live down with you. My throne room's going to be here where, where you live. Now you get into the resurrection and when does that happen in the end times and, 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 and you know, kind of get all complicated. Let's just throw this out there. Uh, let's say I, I die and, and uh, that ice cream truck finally gets me and, and, I'm, and I'm buried and then it was like 100 years later Christ comes back. Well, during that time I don't care where I'm at. I'm floating around somewhere. I'm with Christ. That's all I know. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, so we'll say I'm up there just for the sake of argument because we don't know. Um, at the resurrection I'm reunited. I missed <laughs> with, with, with my body, uh, just as Jesus was reunited with his, his the first example of a glorified body, we're reunited with our bodies, and then apparently we're here. We're here. And, and yeah, we meet him in the sky, and then we're all coming down, and here, here, here we are. Those that are here are going to stay. Those of us who have gone on are coming back. That, that, that's how I, I see this, this, this going down. Uh, you look at the next uh, uh, ideas. When, when, and whatever this heaven looks like, wherever it happens to be, and I'm now leaning toward here, uh, is here's what we know it's going to be like. The curse is gone. It's going to wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Major part of the curse. Grief, crying, pain, no more. No more. It's gone. The curse is wiped out. Complete reversal of, of the curse. Now, there's all kinds of ideas of what that means. Um, what does it really look like? What streets of gold? Do we have a mailbox? You know, all this stuff. And, and, and I mean, who, who knows? Nobody, nobody knows that because we're, we're, we're not there. It hasn't happened yet. It's all conjecture. I can come up with an idea and, and it'll be wrong. I'll say, oh, guess I was wrong. Or, or it could be right and say, ha, huh, guess I was right. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What we know are the important things. Death is gone. Death has died. Uh, tears, sorrow, all of that is now gone. We'll have work to do of some sort. Uh, apparently, I don't know what that looks like, but it won't be laborious. It's like precurse work. I mean, Adam had a tough job. Name the animals. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you're lonely. Here, have a wife. I mean, we don't that, we don't know much about precurse um, life here on Earth, uh, other than how it changed. Oh, now it's going to be painful. Uh, now you're going to have weeds to contend with before you didn't. Now there's death to think about. Didn't have that before. All that's wiped away. So it's us doing whatever it is we do without the labor. Uh, we'll be in relationship with people, uh, but without the, uh, the, the issue of sin. You know, there's no ulterior motives. There's no jabs. There's no, I don't think I like you. There's no, I don't have to, I'm trying to forgive you. I mean, it's, not, it's like, no, sin's gone. It's just, it's just gone. So, so there's relationships, uh, but, but without the imperfections of sin. We'll be engaged with God, but on a much more personal level. I mean, Adam and Eve hung out with God. They hid from him when sin came. We've spent our life hiding from God because we always know there's that one thing, you know. I keep getting forgiven, then I do something else. You know, I ate a cookie, I shouldn't have, or whatever. And, and, and um, that's gone. It's, it's gone. Now we're in full relationship. Before, evidently, God just walked in the garden. Adam, hey, why don't you go name the animals? All right, I'll do it. That's our relationship with him, a, a, a face-to-face type of relationship. This, this new earth, new heaven, heaven that we live in. We live with God. He wipes away those tears. There's nothing to cry about, nothing to be sorrow, uh, sorrowful about. Death is no more. Grief, crying, pain is no more. The complete reversal of, of the curse. All the things that we hate about life uh, are gone. The heartbreaking pain of, of relationships uh, torn to pieces for whatever there was a romantic one or a friendship one or just whatever just the, the, the relationship stuff gone it, it's, it's gone anxiety of facing a doctor to hear the results of of a test 
uh, gone, gone. I told you a few years ago with Cheryl, uh, I'll never forget being in the doctor's office and him saying, She's got a, you've got a 4% chance to survive this. Um, uh, evidently, he, you know, that percentages increased when you guys prayed because uh, she's still here. Um, but, but talk about a uh, 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 challenging uh, few weeks of, of figuring out, well, what, what, what does it mean? You know, what is, what's going to go on in our lives? The, the bone-crushing grief of having a loved one pass away, we probably all experienced that in one way or another with someone. Uh, it's gone, the aches and pains of a body. What do they say? We hit our peak in our early 20s or something, and then we start going downhill from there. Uh, that's gone. That's gone. It's, it's all restored. Everything is rebuilt. The worries associated with raising a child uh, in today's world. Uh, if, you, if you have children, you're not concerned with stuff. Um, you're not paying attention. <laughs> but that's been going on forever since the, since the fall. That's gone. It, it, it's, it's gone when the curse is gone. The grief of, of dealing with a political party that doesn't represent your values is gone. I don't care what party you're in, uh, there's always half the world is upset. You, you, can, you can put anything out on, online. Uh, I, I, I love the smell of tacos in the morning, and someone's going to come political argument with you and talk like, I can't believe you said that. You know, that's just gone. There's none of, there's none of that. I, I, that makes me think there'll be no social media in heaven. It's, oh, it'd be beautiful. <laughs> you can get rid of it now, but I can't. I tried. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's gone. The financial stress of trying to, to make ends meet as prices go up and down, and you know, they always do throughout the decades. I mean, it, 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 it's gone. We go on all day. You, you get it. You get it. Life, life stinks right, at, at times. And stuff about life can cause great pain and sorrow. It's gone. Every bit of it. We live with God under his protection in the midst of his presence. Tears wiped away. Literally nothing to cry about. Death will be no more. It's finished. Literally we are eternal souls. No pain. No grief. No temptation. Satan's out of the picture. He, he's in his final place as, as well. No more sin. It's conquered. No more doubts. No more sorrow. No more second guessing. No brokenness. Everything is gone. The earth has been restored to its utopian paradise, and it will be our eternal home forever. <laughs> uh, I, um, I admit, as a, a young man, there's probably, I don't know, there's several years I kind of struggled uh, with the whole uh, heaven thing. Uh, I mean, I didn't want to go to hell. That, that's, I mean, that doesn't sound good. Uh, th- there's a lot of. Uh, images that, that, that hell you know, brings up in Scripture, eternal separation from God, weeping and gnashing of teeth, a lake of fire, you know, uh, t- eternal torment. I mean, that doesn't sound good, right? It doesn't sound appealing at all. But, but heaven was never like that far off. <laughs> I was like, it sounded really boring. Gosh, I shouldn't say this. Or lightning could go through. I mean, I'd go like, I, I, I mean, it kind of sounds boring, you know, because all, all, I don't know, I'd, I'd be like a young, a young, young preacher, this beautiful, wonderful, wonderful church, uh, but I remember the old people coming up to me, and, and they were probably in their 40s, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and saying, <laughs> no, they were way up, <laughs> they were at least double, <laughs> but I was 20, <laughs> I started to preach when I was 20, um, uh, and they said, like, man, heaven's going to be just like this forever after we just got sung and singing some really bad song off key, all four 19 verses. I mean, you know, and I'm going, like, that's heaven? Uh, I mean, they looked really happy about it. I thought maybe in the 20, 30, 40, 50 years I'll be happier about this, but I never got happier uh, uh, about that. The idea of just kind of floating around, like, sounds fun for about 10 minutes, but then it's like, at some point, like, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to float around singing songs out of key badly forever. Uh, so so, so don't, don't hate me, but, but I, heaven didn't sound all that exciting to me either. I mean, streets of gold sound kind of cool, but then you think about it, it's like, well, nobody's taking money, so who cares? <laughs> I mean, I got all this gold. They're like, yeah, so do I. <laughs> what, it's not worth anything. You know, I mean, whatever. You know, so, I mean, even that, I'm like, ah, I, I mean, if everybody has streets of gold, your street isn't all that special. You know, you know so some of the images, uh, I kind of kind of like, okay, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, but a couple things changed 
that view. Part of it is just through the years as I've, I've studied it more and read it more and more thoughts came to me as I read the same scripture at different times. And, and some of the stuff I, I've you know, thrown out there as, as the years have gone on. But, but first, I realized that the worship going on in heaven is, is, is spontaneous. You know? it, it's, it's, it's not, okay, everybody, we're singing the chorus of holy, 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 and we're going to slide right into verse 2. I mean, no, it's, it's just... The, God is there, and in the presence, even beings who have known him for thousands of years just are in so much awe, they fall before him in worship. So if, if they are so overwhelmed by him, it's like it's his presence that makes everything wonderful, not my act of, I'm going to worship now. I mean, it's, it's, it's spontaneous. I can't help but be in his presence and just fall before him in worship. So that makes me feel better. Uh, it, it, I don't have to fake it. I don't have to act like, hey, this is a happy song. We're supposed to smile. <laughs> uh, it is it's, it's pure joy being, being in his, his presence. Uh, secondly, the reversal of a curse, of the curse, is huge. And this is more of a thing I'm still, this is the part I'm still processing. This is more recent to me as understanding, going back to the beginning and thinking, ah, that's what's going on here. It's not just us floating around somewhere out there, somewhere, you know, whatever. It, it's... Us continuing in life, uh, the resurrection has happened. We, we've been reunited with our body. And, and, and so there's, I mean, Jesus was physical but spirit. He could walk through doors but also eat fish. I mean, you know, you could you look at the, you could, that's a whole series in itself, but it, what was the resurrected Jesus like before the ascension? And, and it's like, okay, if that's us and we're hanging out here and we have things to do that, 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 Occupy us, whatever that is. I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll worry about that then. But it's pure joy, pure peace, pure utopia. Uh, things I, we've never known. I've never known life without sorrow or pain. Not that I walk around in sorrow and pain, but there's just, you just know the, the stuff happens. You're like, well, that's life. Turn on the news for three minutes, and there's going to be some sorrow and pain. All of that is, is removed. Never again will it be a sleepless night thinking, oh, here's a situation. What do I do about that? Or what do I do about that person? Or you know, what, whatever, the stuff that bothers us late at night, it's, it, it, it's gone. Anxiety, pressure, the sadness, uh, an occasional bout of the flu, um, the realization that everything you eat is slowly killing you. <laughs> you know, I mean, every meal I sit down to, I think, oh, that French fry is good. Eh, it just took a year off my life. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, that's that's it's gone. It, it's, it's, it's it's just gone. We don't know uh, the reality of life outside the confinements of time and space. I mean, we can't even we can't even figure that out because all we've known is time and, and space. It's all we know is whatever heaven has been described to us, that it is a massive upgrade from what we have now. And, we, and, and some, at some point, your faith just says, okay, there's, I've never had, I mean, everything God has said so far has been true. Uh, if he can take a body that was ruthlessly slaughtered on a cross, no chance of... I mean, I mean, it's dead. And three days later, bring it back from the grave. He, he'll be able to take care of me. Uh, when, when, when he's called the firstborn in, uh, from among the dead, I can be among the second. <laughs> I can put total confidence in that. When he says this new life will be an upgrade, I'm ju I just believe him. I just believe him. I don't have to know every detail. I don't have to know, have it all figured out. I don't have to worry about being bored or floating around or, or whatever the stuff that used to, used to bother me. It's like, it's just going to be, it's going to be better. It's going to be better. Oh, I just felt like the president. It's going to be better. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, so it, 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 that's a faith Thing. I just know. I just know it, it's going to be better. I, 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 I look at it like when you are, um, a, when there is a, a baby in a womb, all, all that baby knows is the womb. It's, it's comfortable, it's warm, it's dark, it's peaceful. I hear voices out there that I've connected with in some way that life is awesome. Life is good. Now, now we all know, hey, your life's going to change pretty quick. You're going you're, you're to come out. There's a big world. There's lights, and, and, and you can talk, and there's, there's French fries. and I mean, there's all kinds of fun things to do in life. But you don't know that when you're in the womb. And then pressure comes, and, and, and all of a sudden, you're out there, and you're crying. Someone's smacking you and, and, and cutting uh, 
your umbilical cord, and you're like, oh no, um, there goes my food supply. But, but then you realize pretty quick, this is, this is better. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty good. We're kind of at the same thing now. Uh, this is all we know. All we know is heaven. Just trust us. Trust him. <laughs> the next step is better. Whatever discomfort you go through getting from here to there, don't worry about it. I mean, it, it'll be short-lived. I mean, uh, it's just, it, it'll happen, and then you get to go to heaven to the, to the upgrade. I love the way Revelation ends. Whether you agree with me or not on any of this stuff we've talked about in Revelation, honestly, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't care. Uh, um, you know, I think it's right, but, but I'm okay being wrong, too. It doesn't matter. Every view on Revelation ends with the same Thing, the same thing to look forward to. It's just the timing and, and, and stuff whenever it is. In chapter 22, at verse 6, uh, it says, He said to me, these words are faithful and true. And put, put faith in the stuff we've talked about. Again, specifics of my view, I could care less, but, but the idea of this heaven that's coming, put, put your faith there. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Here's Jesus. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. When I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had shown them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm a fellow servant with you, your brothers, the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book. You worship God. I'm just an angel. You worship God. Verse 12, let's just look. I'm coming soon. My reward is with me to repay each person according to his work. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I've never thought of it this way, but I mean, the beginning of the curse and the end of the curse. It's also the beginning of time and the end of the time, but I mean... Uh, you know, that puts a different twist on things. I don't know. The beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus here. So they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So I, Jesus, have sent my angel to attest these things to you for the churches, for us. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. Both the spirit and the bride say, come. That's us. Come, come, Jesus. Let anyone who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life freely. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share of the tree of life and the holy city which are written about in this book. He who testifies about these things says, yes, I am coming soon. To which we as believers, and, and we have no other way to respond than to say the same thing John did. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.